welcome back. So, what I want to talk about today is the notion of a sign of a permutation. So, again we will do this by example. So, let us look at the following permutation written out in two line notation. So, now I look at the numbers 1 through 5 and here is the permutation which is 5 3 4 1 2. So, let us call this permutation pi. So, again the recall two line notation <coughs> which just means that <coughs> these are just the, the, the entries. This is I mean the bottom row is really the permutation of the numbers 1 through 5. So, uh, often we you know we also think of it as functions. So, we will write these entries as follows. So, if you call this permutation as pi we also say that pi of 1 is 5 for instance. So, recall the function way of thinking about it. And this function is usually also denoted by the same letter pi. So, 1 goes to 5, uh, pi of 2 is 3 and so on, pi of 3 is 4, <coughs> pi of 4 is 1 and pi of 5 is 2. <coughs> so, now uh, let us consider the following set, let us look at all these pairs i comma j. Now, what are i and j? Well, i is a number between 1 and 5, j is a number between 1 and 5, where i is smaller than j where such that the following happens that i is a number which is strictly smaller than j, but the image of i under this permutation pi of i is strictly bigger than pi of j. Okay. So, given a, given a permutation pi, here is a set that one can naturally consider which is you scan the list and you look for all i and j. So, entries for instance you look at in this example look at 1 and 2 for instance, i is 1, j is 2, i is smaller than j, but pi of 1 which is 5 is strictly bigger than pi of 2 which is 3. Okay. So, in this example let us write down what are the i's and j's which satisfy this property. You can have so, in this case this set consists of the following ele elements it has 1 and 2 because 1 maps to 5, 2 maps to 3. Similarly, it has uh, 1 3, 1 4, 1 5, then it also has 2 4 2 5. 3 4 and 3 5. Okay. So, let us just check if you look at 2 4 if i is 2 and j is 4 pi of 2 is 3 whereas pi of 4 is 1. Okay. So, 2 is smaller than 4, but pi of 2 is strictly bigger than pi of 4 okay. and similarly if I have 3 5 for instance 3 is smaller than 5, but what it maps to 4 is bigger than what 5 maps to which is 2. Okay. So, this is the list of uh, uh, list of elements sometimes these are called the inversions these are the places where you know if there were no permutation if everything mapped to itself you would not have anything out of order, but uh, because pi in general reorders the numbers you will typically have pairs which are sort of out of order they are in the wrong order in some sense. So, this is that that full list of elements whose order is somehow changed by the permutation pi. And so, let us just uh, uh, say something more this set here the, the number of elements in this set. So, that is that will be important for us. So, like I said it is sometimes called the, the number of inversions. So, the number of <coughs> so, let us just say this is the set what we will call the set of inversions of pi. the number of inversions of pi well there are only two possibilities it can be an even number or it can be an odd number. <coughs> 
right and if the number of inversions is even then we say that pi is an even permutation and if the number of inversions is odd we say that pi is an odd permutation. So, in this case if the number of inversions of pi is even we will say that uh, pi is an even permutation so, that is the terminology and if the number of inversions is odd we will say that pi is an odd permutation ok. And we also have a notion of sign which is another way of saying the same thing. So, equivalently here is another thing we do. So, pi is even that is one way of saying it another equivalent way of saying this is to say that the sign of pi is plus 1 and if pi is odd we define something called the sign we say the sign of pi is minus 1. Again these are all for now you can think of it as various different ways of saying the same thing it will become somewhat clearer as we go along as to what the advantages are of thinking of it in terms of plus ones and minus ones ok. So, this is just the notion of even permutation and odd permutation. Now, here is a here is a very nice uh, pictorial point of view to keep in mind. So, let us pretty much draw the same picture out there, but may be a little uh, little larger. So, here is the picture again of pi as a function. So, I have the numbers 1, <coughs> 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, I have tried to draw them reasonably equally spaced and on the other side <coughs> have the same numbers again 1, 2, 3, ok. So, I am going to draw the function diagram what does pi do to each number. So, pi maps as we just said it sends uh, 1 to 5. So, I will draw it by as close to a straight line as I can. So, I will say pi maps 1 to 5 uh, what does it do to 2 it maps it to 3. So, 2 goes to 3 it maps 3 to 4. it maps 4 to 1. So, it maps 4 to 1 and it maps 5 to 2. Okay. So, here is the diagram which depicts what pi does to the numbers 1 through 5 ok. Now, observe that the set of inversions has a very simple interpretation in terms of this diagram ok. So, let us see what were the what you know how many inversions did we have in this in this example ah let us start with that. So, if you look at the number of inversions we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 right. So, there are 8 inversions. Now, let us look at this picture and count the number of crossings and the number of places where these lines intersect. So, there is 1 right there 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, this one here 6, 7 and 8 ok. So, the number of crossings is exactly equal to 8 as well and this is not sort of a coincidence this is pretty much just a pictorial way of looking at inversions. So, observe that crossings in this diagram crossings or intersections really correspond to inversions of pi ok. And why is that? It is a very simple observation you know what does an inversion of pi mean? It means that you have two numbers i and j right that is this is the definition that i is smaller than j. So, let me draw it in this diagram let us say i is this and j is something Lar larger than i. So, i could be 2 and j could be 4 for instance, but pi of i which means what i maps to under the transformation pi and pi of j what j maps to they are in the opposite order. So, if pi of i is say something here pi of j is going to be something larger than that right. So, this is pi of i and this is pi of j. 
this is exactly what an inversion means right so every time there is an inversion there is a pair ij which gives you an inversion of pi then in this diagram what it would give you is a crossing those two lines would have to cross somewhere okay so counting the number of crossings in in these kinds of diagrams is the same as counting the total number of inversions of pi now there's just one one little thing one will have to uh, worry about when drawing these diagrams one will sort of have to take care to ensure that you don't draw it in such a way that three lines or four lines or more than two lines intersect at a point okay so while drawing these diagrams you should avoid drawing them such that more than two things more than two lines meet at a point okay so just a little warning uh, while drawing these diagrams draw these pictures in such a way that that uh, at most two lines meet at a point at most well meaning yeah maybe there is a different way of rephrasing it that three or more lines so in such a way that uh, you you don't have three or more lines meeting at a point three or more lines so for instance if i had say something like this so i have say for instance this and say if you drew the third one also going to the same point then counting counting the crossings becomes somewhat trickier well technically what is meant here is that these two lines meet these two lines meet and the first and the third lines also meet at that point so technically speaking this is a point at which this really counts as three crossings okay there are sort of three pairs of lines which sort of go transversely to each other but if you just draw it as a single point then it's not so easy to do the counting when one is trying to uh, really make sense out of it so what one should do when faced with the prospect of drawing such diagrams is and this is something that i did while i drew the previous diagram is to sort of just make the lines go gently around so if it seems like they are going to go through that just sort of slightly tweak them so that now you will see in this diagram that there are three crossings so there is this crossing here and because we moved the line a little bit these other two crossings are also clear enough to see okay so this is the only thing to keep in mind when trying to draw these these sorts of diagrams but this is a very very nice thing to have this pictorial way of counting inversions or crossings so now what would an odd permutation mean well how do you check if something is odd you will draw this diagram uh, of pi and then count the number of crossings so if the number of crossings is odd then it's an odd permutation if it's any e if the number of crossings is even it's an even permutation now this whole business of sign is especially interesting when one studies what's called composition of permutations so there is the notion of composition of permutations so what does composition mean well it means the the usual notion of composition for functions so let's again do this by example suppose i have two permutations pi is say for, again i write in two line notation it's 12345 53412 and i have another permutation called sigma which is again the numbers 1 2 3 4 and 5 are mapped to 21453 okay so these are my two permutations pi and sigma now what is sigma composition pi okay so here's a new operation it's a way of generating yet another permutation 
So, let us call it sigma circle pi or sigma composition pi. So, what is this defined as? Well, it is a new function which is just the composition of these two functions. So, sigma composition pi is defined as follows. So, define a new permutation as follows. How do you figure out what this does to i? Well, this is just sigma of pi of i. So, this is just the usual notion of function composition. Okay. So, if you think in terms of functions, so here is the function pi. So, you first perform pi and once you have done something to pi, something through pi, then you, you follow it up by sigma. So, for instance, I have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, I let us say I have some number i here. I first figure out what pi does to it. It may be maps it to some other number and then whatever that number is, I see what sigma does to it. So, maybe sigma maps it to this number. So, these two steps one after the other, they tell me what i finally maps to. It goes to sigma evaluated on pi of i. So, this is the number pi of i and this final answer is just sigma evaluated on pi of i. Okay. So, composing two functions is best done sort of in this pictorial setup. So, let us actually do it for these examples because we already have one of these pictures up on the board. So, here what I have is already the picture for pi. So, recall that the first step here, this first map is already the picture for pi. So, maybe I should draw arrows here. Okay. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 under pi get mapped to whatever they get mapped to. So, we have drawn the, the crossings diagram. Now, let us look at the, the function sigma. So, we need to do this one more step. So, let us look at the function sigma and see what sigma does to these, these 5 numbers. Okay. So, so let us do this. So, let me just write the numbers on top. So, that is a 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, let us look at sigma. What does it do to the number 1? Well, sigma maps it to the number 2. So, first let us let us again write down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the other side. So, what does sigma do to the number 1? Well, it maps it to the number 2, right? That is according to this. So, 1 maps to 2. What does sigma do to the number 2? Well, it maps it to the number 1. So, I draw this diagram. 3 maps to 4, 4 maps to 5, and 5 maps to 3. Okay. So, what we have done now is also drawn the diagram for the picture for sigma. And let us again do the same thing, let us mark out the crossings. Uh, let us use some other color here. So, how many crossings does the diagram for sigma alone have? Well, here is one crossing, here is another crossing, here is a third crossing. Right? So, that seems to be it. There are three crossings. So, recall pi had eight crossings and sigma seems to have three crossings. Now, the question is what is the composition do? So, pi here. So, let me write down the number of crossings. So, pi has 8 crossings, 8 crossings and sigma has 3 crossings. Now, we just talked about, so of course, what are the odd and the evenness? So, 8 crossings means pi is an even permutation and 3 crossings would make sigma an odd permutation. Now, let us look at the composition. That is really where uh, these diagrams become very interesting. As we said, the composition is just you take the first diagram and follow it up by the second diagram. Okay. So, let us draw the composition diagram. So, I will take these two things and I will compose them. So, let me see what the composition looks like. So, again, <coughs> we will just write the numbers down. 
and let us just compose these two things. So, for instance, 1 maps to 5 which in turn maps to 3. So, 1 should go to a 3 under the composition ok. So, this is I am now going to draw the diagram for the composition of sigma pi. So, 1 maps to 3. So, I am just using the definition you should check that this is in fact correct by actually using the definition. Now, uh, 2 maps to 3 which maps to 4. So, 2 maps to 4. Similarly, 3 maps to 4 maps to 5. So, 3 maps to 5, 4 maps to 1 which maps to 2. So, 4 maps to 2 under the composition and finally, 5 maps to 1. Right. So, again here I need to keep in mind that warning that I said about not making 3 things pass through the same point. So, I will sort of just tweak my line a little bit. So, as to make it go like this ok. So, what I have drawn now is the diagram for the composition and again let us count the, the number of crossings. So, here is one, here is another, here is another, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, here the number of crossings seems to be, so the number of crossings is 7. Okay. So, what we now have on the board are both diagrams on the one, one hand we have the diagrams for sigma and pi and we noticed they had uh, 8 and 3 crossings and on the other hand we have the diagram for sigma composition pi where we notice they have 7 crossings. Now, here is the question how do we relate the number of crossings of sigma pi and sigma composition pi. So, I want to do the following I want to relate the number of crossings of sigma composition pi relate the crossings of this with the number of crossings of each of the two pieces crossings of sigma and number of crossings of pi ok. So, how do we figure out what happens? So, let us just do it case by case. Let us look at what all the various possibilities would give us and then we will see if, if we can make sense out of this ok. So, what are the 4 possibilities? So, really there are only 4 possibilities. So, 4 possibilities for what? Well, here is a typical what are what are the various possible diagrams. So, I, I first have pi and then I follow it up by sigma right. So, this is what is happening when I take the composition of these two permutations. Now, here is what could happen I could have say two numbers i and j here which under pi give me a crossing. So, pi i may be maps to something large j maps to something small. So, there, therefore, they cross these two lines cross each other and now I have two resultant numbers here which I need to further map under sigma and maybe sigma does the same thing to them sigma again leads to a crossing it inverts the order of these two elements. So, here is one possibility that I have you know I have the numbers i j for, for this pair pi gives me a crossing and for the resulting numbers sigma again gives me a crossing right. So, this is two successive crossings. Now, suppose such a thing happened then what would happen? So, this is case 1 this is the very first possibility that I have two successive crossings. Now, if this happens then so I have I, you know each of each of them gives me 1. So, pi gives me 1 crossing sigma gives me 1 crossing, but when I look at the, the composition of the 2. So, what happens when I look at pi composed with sigma? So, this is the individual picture if I look at pi composed with sigma then here is what it does I have i j. So, first the result of pi or pi of i is bigger than pi of j, but then sigma of pi of i is smaller than sigma of pi of j. So, when I when I compose the 2 i maps to something which is smaller than whatever j maps to ok. In other words if I have 
one crossing followed by another crossing, then they undo the effect of each other. The, the, in the final answer in the composition of these two things, sigma of pi of i would actually be you know bigger than it would be smaller than sigma of pi of j. Okay. So, two successive crossings lead to no crossing in the composition, this leads to no crossing. Okay, and let us let us actually see it in action. So, let us look at a, a, an example where we have two successive crossings. Uh, what would be such a thing? So, for instance, we could look at the numbers. Uh, so, for instance, I have a crossing here in sigma, so which is 1 and 2 give rise to a crossing, but of course, in the preceding step that is not a crossing. Okay. So, let us look at another one. Uh, let us look at 4 and 5. So, in sigma I have the numbers 4 and 5, 4 maps to 5, 5 maps to 3. So, in sigma they, they give rise to a crossing. Now, let us look at the one preceding step I have 1 and 3 which give rise to a crossing again. So, let us write this down. So, here is what we have in our example the 1 and the 3 map to in the first step they map to 4 and 5 so that is a crossing and the next step under sigma 4 maps to 5 and 5 maps to 3. Okay, so, this is under pi and this is in the diagram for sigma. I am not drawing the full diagram only the relevant part. So, here is an example where I have two crossings and the in the final answer 1 maps to 3 that is a composition and 3 maps to 5. Right? So, there is no crossing anymore in the final answer. So, let us look at that as well. So, I have 1 mapping to 3 and uh, 3 mapping to 5. So, these two lines 1 going to 3 and 3 going to 5 will of course, not cross each other. So, the key moral of this story is that if I have two successive crossings, then in the end product there is not any crossing, there are no crossings anymore. So, this is somehow the, the, the important case, all the others are, are quite straightforward. So, what are the other possibilities? Is well, you could have one crossing. So, here is case 2. If I look at pi, uh, so I have my numbers i and j, say that in the diagram for pi there was a crossing, but in the diagram for sigma they do not cross. Say maybe this goes here and that goes somewhere. So, it is a crossing and followed by a no crossing. So, if I have a crossing followed by a no crossing, then in the composition there will still be a crossing because this i would map to something in the end which is in fact still bigger than whatever j maps to. Okay. So, cross followed by no cross, cross uh, let us say followed by no cross leads to a crossing at the end. So, this is cross followed by cross leads to no cross. And similarly, you should work out the, the other situations yourself. So, if there is no crossing to start with, but then sigma leads to a crossing, then again there will still be a crossing. So, no crossing followed by a crossing would lead to a crossing. And finally, the fourth case where you do not have a crossing and I mean both pi and sigma do not give you crossings. When that happens, you do not have a crossing in the end. Okay? So, that is the fourth case, which is again no cross followed by no crossing, of course, leads to no crossing. Okay? So, the key case really is the very first case that we looked at, which is that when you have two successive crossings, there is in the end there is not any crossing. In all the other cases, if one of them is a cross and the other is not a cross, then you do have one crossing and if both of them are not crosses, you do not have a cross in the end. Okay. So, putting this, this discussion together, here is basically what we conclude. So, here is the very interesting conclusion of this whole discussion. If I want to count the total number of crossings, so the number of crossings in the composition of sigma and pi is well it, you can obtain it using the following formula. You first count the number of crossings in sigma 
to which you add the number of crossings in pi ok. So, you add all the crossings in sigma to the number of crossings in pi except when there are successive crossings if sigma if, if there is a crossing in pi followed by a crossing in sigma then as we saw in the end those two sort of undo the effect of each other at the end of the day there is not a crossing in the composition. So, this plus this minus 2 times the number of what we will call successive crossings by successive crossing we mean a picture of this kind ok. So, this is a way of counting the total number of crossings in sigma composition pi and as you can see the proof is more or less what we have already said that there are these cases and except in the case where so observe if, if say this were the configuration if there is a successive crossing then this the crossing here would be a crossing for pi. So, that would contribute 1 for, for a crossing of pi this guy here would contribute when you count the crossings of sigma but when you compose them these two sort of cancel eff cancel out the effect of each other. So, they give you no crossings. So, what that formula is doing is really counting this as a 1 counting this as a 1 but then subtracting 2 times such double crossings or successive crossings. So, what you get is uh, that formula there. Now, what we will do here is just check that this works fine in our example. So, let us uh, let us just look at the diagram and try and figure out how many configurations. So, what do we need to do? We know the number of crossings in sigma is, is uh, 3, the number of crossings in pi is 8. So, 8 plus 3 is 11. Let us count the number of successive crossings in this in this diagram. So, where can you get a successive crossing? Well, here is 1. So, I look at this configuration here between 4, 5 and 5, 3. So, that is and the thing here 1 going to 5 and 2 mapping to 3 mapping to 4. So, here is one successive crossing that is highlighted in this diagram. Okay, so, as one of them and there is another which is let us see uh, the one which sends 3 to 4 and 5 to 3. Okay, so, let us also try and highlight this. So, the diagram is going to be something of a mess, but here we are 3 4 and 5 3 that is another cross and what precedes that is 2 3. and the same thing 1 5. Okay, so, what is marked in the diagram in the blue lines give you one successive crossing and the red lines give you another successive crossing. So, there are two successive crossings in this diagram and so, this formula here uh, in this example at least gives you the following it says there are three crossings in sigma. 8 crossings in pi and 2 successive crossings. So, minus 2 times 2. So, there should be 11 minus 4 which is exactly 7 crossings ok. So, the number of crossings in the composition is exactly given by this formula ok. Now, what you know the, the main consequence of this is really for the sign. So, observe that here is the nice corollary that if here is a nice table we can make here is sigma pi and the composition so if sigma and pi are both even permutations by e i mean even that means that the number of crossings in sigma is even the number of crossings in pi is even the sum of two even numbers is even and this thing you are subtracting out is always an even number because it is 2 times of something. So, if both sigma and pi are even numbers then of course, the right hand side is an even number. Similarly, 
or, or let us do this if one of them is even the other is odd the number of crossings. So, this is even that is odd even plus odd is odd from which you subtract an even you still get an odd number. So, one of them is odd the other is even the answer is odd if both are odd the answer is even. Okay. So, if you compose two even permutations or two odd permutations the answer is always an even permutation. If you compose one odd and one even permutation then the answer is an odd permutation. So, sometimes a very easy way of writing this out is to say the sign of the composition. So, remember the sign was defined to be plus 1 or minus 1 depending on whether they are even or odd. So, sign of the composition is just the product of the signs. So, another way of saying if both are plus 1 the answer is plus 1, if both are minus 1 the answer is still plus 1, but if one of them is plus and the other is minus the answer is a minus 1. Okay. So, this is sometimes called the multiplicativity of the sign function and what we have done is really try to understand it in terms of the inversions and uh, sort of a little more pictorially in terms of these crossings in the in the diagram itself. Okay. So, next time we look at still more properties of, of permutations and signs and so on.